New reports show that terrorist group ISIS has recruited U.S. citizens for an attack deadlier than 9-11. Do you know how to test your survival plan for vulnerabilities that expose your family to unspeakable atrocities? Because these are the same terrorists committing a Christian holocaust. They've crucified women and children and recently beheaded two American journalists. And now... They've set their sights on your hometown. CNN recently reported that people are joining ISIS right here in the United States. The real threat isn't even the attack itself. It's the social meltdown that will follow. Riots, chaos, and violence will fill the streets as people panic. If you think Obama and the government will protect you, you've been living under a rock. Only you can keep your family safe and alive when the crap hits the fan. My name is Craig Irons, and in this short presentation, I'll show you three strategies to test your survival plan for deadly holes that I learned from a retired Army Ranger and wilderness survival expert. I'll also share with you his complete survival plan that'll get you prepped for any disaster with a single trip to Walmart. You'll learn that the key to keeping your family alive isn't complicated techniques or so-called superfoods. Keeping your family alive is about having a simple, solid plan and the right supplies. And you can get all the supplies you need in a single trip to any superstore like Walmart. That may sound like a stretch, but bear with me and I'll show you exactly how it works. You'll see which foods and supplies you'll need in a disaster and may not survive without. And you'll see how to protect yourself, your home, and your family from angry, starving mobs. Now, Obama and his liberal cronies want you to be dependent on them, so they don't want this information getting out. I don't know how long I can keep it up, so make sure you watch it before it gets taken down. Let's face it, this country is headed for disaster. Terrorist groups like ISIS are recruiting members within our borders and planning deadly attacks. But ISIS isn't the only threat to your family's safety. Natural disasters are getting worse each year. You remember the disaster following Hurricane Katrina. The wind, rain, and floods were only part of the danger. The real threats were the lack of food and drinking water and the violent gangs of hungry looters. You think it couldn't happen to you? Experts say this year could be the worst ever for natural disasters, and whether it's crazed jihadists, a hurricane, a earthquake, or a tornado that starts the chaos, the end result's the same. A very real and deadly threat to the security of your loved ones. The social meltdown might come even sooner once people realize that the government's lying about the supposed economic recovery. They fudge unemployment numbers to hide the truth. And they don't mention that people are making less than ever in just about every field, even while inflation is skyrocketing. So you're making less and less money, while each dollar you do make is worth less and less. We're plummeting towards the social meltdown tipping point. Uh, soon your paycheck won't be worth the paper it's printed on. And then no one will be willing to work anymore. Police, firefighters, and even the military will refuse to work for free, leaving you to fend for yourself against starving mobs of angry Obama worshippers who will be coming for your food stockpile. The real question is whether this impending economic disaster will trigger social chaos before the energy crisis does. That's right, our nation is facing an energy crisis. And I'm not just talking about high gas prices. Our weak power grid can barely handle the stress we put on it now. And it's a big, fat, vulnerable target to terrorist attacks. In fact, on April 16th, well-armed terrorists attacked a power station in Silicon Valley, knocking it out of commission. It took over six weeks to get it back up and running, and the terrorists were never caught. The chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission warned that this looked like a practice run and that terrorists could use the same style of attack to target just a few power stations and cut power to most of the country. He warned that it would take months to repair. Well, without electricity, no one will be able to get their money out of the banks. No one will get paid. Transportation will slow to a crawl and grocery store shelves will go bare. People will panic. And what thanks did this federal chairman get for warning us? He was forced to resign, so Obama and the liberal media could go on pretending everything was just fine. Right up until all hell breaks loose, and you've got no way to feed your family. The riots in Ferguson, Missouri, showed just how close even small towns are to descending into lawlessness. And when that happens, 
Your family will be looking to you to keep them safe. That's why it's so important that you try out these three simple ways to test your survival plan for holes. And why I want you to have this complete survival plan that shows you how to get prepped for any disaster with a single trip to Walmart. Now, before I get too far, I want to tell you about how my own overconfidence you know, that almost killed my family. It's embarrassing, but I figure if I share the story, then you won't make the same mistake that I did by just assuming that your survival plan was good enough. Like I said up front, my name is Craig Irons. I'm from a small town in Indiana. But a couple of years ago, I moved my wife and two kids to a house in the hills and canyons of southwest Idaho. I wanted privacy, and that's what we got. We have to drive 45 minutes through winding gravel roads just to get from our house to the main road. Our closest neighbor, a tough old man who saved my family's lives, he lives about five miles away. The closest town is an hour and a half away, and it only has a population of 97. Well, when we first got here, me and my family thought this was heaven. No nosy neighbors, no government watchdogs on our backs. We kept our pantry stocked with a once-a-month trip to the store and heated our house with a wood stove. I thought we were far enough from civilization that we'd be safe from any disaster that might happen. But I wasn't ready. The first winter we lived here, we had record snowfalls and record low temperatures. In the middle of the day, it was only zero degrees Fahrenheit. The gravel road to my house was covered in several feet of snow. My truck couldn't get through it. The pump for our well froze, so we struggled to get fresh water. I thought we had plenty of food and water stockpiled. But as the days went by, the stockpile was disappearing fast. My kids complained about smaller portions at dinner, but only my wife recognized how much danger we were in. I'll never forget when she asked me, how much more water do we have? Not much, I admitted, but enough for another couple of days. Plus, we could always melt the snow. I was too ashamed to tell her that water wasn't our biggest problem. Our food stockpile would only last another day, and our wood for the wood stove would run out soon after. If I didn't do something... My family was going to die hungry, thirsty, and freezing. I decided that the next day I'd make it to the main road no matter what. If my truck got stuck, I'd walk the rest of the way. Well, that night it snowed another 18 inches. My truck couldn't get out of the garage, let alone drive 20 miles through winding, hilly roads covered in ice and snow. I can't describe how helpless I felt. And that's a terrible feeling, knowing your family's going to die and not being able to do a damn thing about it. I tried to figure out how fast I could walk 20 miles in five feet of snow in zero-degree weather. It might kill me, but what other choice did I have? I had to try to save my family. As I got bundled up, I heard the most beautiful noise of my entire life, a diesel engine approaching our house. I ran outside to see our old neighbor climbing out of his truck, which had bigger wheels and higher lift than mine. Figured I'd come check on you new folks, he said. His name was Chuck Coleman, and he saved my family's lives. He had enough food, water, and fuel stockpiled to keep us alive until the snow melted enough for me to move my truck three weeks later. I couldn't believe how close I'd come to killing my family. I knew winters could be tough, and I thought I'd prepared enough. I had a stockpile. I had a plan. But I didn't realize the holes in my plan. The disaster was worse than I thought it could ever be. My trusted source of water disappeared. My food and wood stockpiles weren't nearly big enough. I swore I would never let that happen again. I'd never let holes in my survival plan put my family in danger again. I knew winter would come again, and I knew there were a million other disasters that might happen. So I started searching for a new survival plan. I looked all over the library and the internet, reading everything I could find. I must have downloaded 20 different guides about surviving disasters, but none of them were what I needed. All the guides I found required tons of my time and were way too complicated. Hey, I'm a busy man. If I don't work, my family doesn't eat. I didn't have time to figure out overly complicated survival plans. I didn't want to become a nutrition expert or learn about calorie-rich foods from Asia. I didn't have time to learn all the secrets of some guy who survived Hurricane Katrina. Hey, I just wanted to learn how to keep my family alive during a disaster. People have been surviving in dangerous situations since Adam and Eve. I knew it wasn't as complicated as these survival guides said it was. Finally, I realized I had the perfect person to help me develop a survival plan. Chuck, the man who'd helped me survive the winter. So one night I drove over to his house and we talked. He told me about his experience as an army ranger and how he'd survived in situations tougher than most people can even imagine. 
War, natural disasters, riots, you name it, and he survived it. That's why he wasn't worried to come live out here in the middle of nowhere. He knows exactly how to look at a dangerous situation and then make a plan to get through it. Over the years, Chuck learned how to spot weaknesses in his plans and fix them before anything could go wrong. Well, I asked for his help in creating my own survival plan and showed him all the plans and guides that I'd purchased. He looked through them, sometimes nodding, but mostly shaking his head. This stuff isn't bad, but it makes everything too damn complicated. Look at this. He read a line from one of the guides. A paste packed with proteins, vitamins, and minerals that seeps out of rock formations in the Himalayas. You don't need Asian rock goop to get protein, he laughed. Buy a jar of peanut butter, and you can get all the vitamins and minerals you need from a $3 bottle of vitamins. Even better, stock up on the right canned vegetables, and that's all the special nutrients you need right there. I can help you put together a better plan, he said. One that's simple and to the point. And I'll tell you what, all the supplies you need to get prepped for a disaster, I bet you can pick up every one of them at the Walmart. So the next day, that's exactly what we did. We drove to the nearest Walmart, which was two hours for us, but probably a lot closer for most people. Each grabbed a cart, and then I followed him all around the store as he grabbed what I needed. When I got home that evening, I had all the supplies I needed to get my family through the next winter and to get them through any disaster that came my way. Over the next couple of weeks, Chuck wrote out for me a complete survival plan. Everything he'd learned from his time as an army ranger about surviving riots and social collapse, and everything he'd learned from living in the wilderness about making sure your family can eat, drink, and stay safe. Once he gave it to me, I studied every word. I was never going to put my family in danger again. I followed every piece of advice he wrote for me. And after I thought I had everything ready, I let him know. Oh, you're prepped, are you? He said. Well, let's find out. Chuck told me he had three ways to test my survival plan. If you want to test your own survival readiness, this is how you can do it. Grab a pen and paper so you can run these tests later. The first was to do a practice disaster week. Before I could stop him, Chuck went to my circuit breaker and cut off the power to my house. Don't turn that on for seven days, he said. Don't turn on your faucets. Don't go to the store. Don't even buy gas. For the next week, you have to survive only on your stockpile. So for one week... That's what we did. And boy, did it show me the holes in my plan. Well, for starters, I learned that my kids will absolutely devour a plate of beans. That meant we needed to stockpile more beans than most people. I also learned that my wife's allergic to the type of soap I'd put in our stockpile. That was something else to modify. This practice disaster week helped me see where my survival plan needed work. But to be honest, my real disaster week was back during our first winter. That's when I found out how utterly unprepared my family was. We didn't have enough food or fuel, and we only had one way to get drinking water. When you do your own practice disaster week, you'll find all kinds of little vulnerabilities, like needing extra beans or a different soap. More importantly, you'll resolve deadly exposure to catastrophe, like not having enough food or not being ready to defend your family against a desperate intruder or escape the wrath of an angry mob. Fix them all, starting with the big ones, and then try it again in a couple of weeks. The next test Chuck showed me was just as easy, the start-to-finish equipment check. Make sure all your equipment works and that you know how to use it. Chuck had me bring all my survival equipment outside, and then he started giving me orders. You know how to use that fire starter, he asked. Show me. So I built a fire. How about that water purifier? Let's see it. So I purified some water. We went through everything, cooking equipment, tools, even my firearms. For some things I'd never used before, like the water purifier, I was making sure I knew how to use them. But even for things I'd used a thousand times, like my rifle, I was making sure they were in proper working order. Chuck told me to test everything every couple of months. You never knew when you'll need it. So to make sure your survival plan will keep your family alive after a disaster, get out all your equipment and test it. Make sure you know how to use it and make sure it works right. The last thing you need is for your propane stove to not work when you're trying to boil water, or your handgun to lock up when there's an angry mob breaking down your door. Actually, Chuck's last way to test for holes in your survival plan is all about protecting your family and home from mobs, thieves, murderers, and rapists, anyone who might be trying to hurt you during a collapse. Chuck called this Frankenstein, but I'm going to call it zombies since that's more what's in the movies these days. It's a simple game you can play with your kids to test your home for weak spots. Pick a starting point somewhere in your yard. You're going to be the zombie or Frankenstein or any monster and chase your kids. They get a head start, and then they run inside and hide. 
They can declare doors or windows locked by touching them and yelling locked. And they can build barricades in hallways. All they have to do is yell barricade and point to where it is. But any lock or barricade only stops you for 60 seconds, and then you get to move through it. Once you catch them, the game is over. You probably see the goal of this game. It shows you where the easiest entry points to your house are. And when you're walking around looking for an unlocked door or window, you're seeing all the ways an intruder or mob is going to be looking to break in. And once you're inside, you'll see the best places to slow down an intruder or mob and protect your family. Then you can use a few simple tricks that Chuck showed me to turn your house into a fortress. I'll get to those in a minute. To get an even better view of the cracks in your defenses, switch places with your kids so you can see what it's like to try to keep someone out. Also, try inviting someone else over to play the game so you can see how someone who doesn't know your house tries to get in. It feels a little silly, but my kids enjoyed it. More important, it showed me what I needed to do to make my house safer. After all, there's no point in stockpiling food and water if a thief or mob can just break in and steal it from you. Those three tests showed me how inadequate my survival plan was. Right away, I went and fixed them, following the advice that Chuck had written out for me. The next winter came, and again we got snowed in and cut off from the world. But this time, I kept my family warm and their bellies full. Let me tell you, I felt so proud seeing my wife and kids look at me with complete trust. They knew that I was taking care of them, that no matter what, I wouldn't let anything bad happen to them. That's my responsibility as a husband, father, and patriot, and it's yours too. There's no denying it. The world is going to hell. Pretty soon, I won't be the only one who has to provide for my family without grocery stores, without electricity, and without the government's help. The American people are on edge. They're like a horse who smells a mountain lion, nervous, jumpy, and ready to panic. The riots in Ferguson prove that. One bad incident with a cop, one protest gone wrong, and suddenly the whole town is rioting. It won't take much for the powder keg to blast all over the country. Just one spark, and boom, that spark might be a terrorist attack by the U.S. citizens recruited by ISIS. It might be a natural disaster, or economic collapse, or a nationwide power blackout. But whatever sets it off, it's the bedlam that follows that's the real danger. No power. No food in the grocery stores, no clean drinking water, welfare bums getting hungry, lazy gangsters getting greedy, and ordinary citizens who just didn't prepare. That's a recipe for nationwide social collapse. Don't count on the government to save you. They won't even be able to pay the police or military to protect you from angry mobs, from hoodlums, murderers, or rapists. Or worse, they'll try to round everyone up into FEMA camps where disease spreads like wildfire and we all starve together. No thank you. Fathers, husbands, and patriots like you and me, we have to take responsibility for keeping our families alive. That's what Chuck and me were talking about when we decided to make this presentation. This nation was built on the backs of responsible people, and it's fallen apart because there aren't enough of us anymore. We decided to do something to help. Now, there's nothing two regular guys can do to turn millions of lazy welfare bums into hard workers, but we can help the people who are already responsible patriots get prepared for what's coming. After all, each winter, me and Chuck have to survive without any help from anyone, and Chuck has survived more dangerous situations than anyone I know. You name it, riots, insurgency, natural disasters, evacuations, outright warfare, he's made it through. So the two of us decided to share his survival plan with any true patriot who wants to protect his family during the coming collapse. Chuck provided the info, and I'm helping him get it to you. It's not complicated. It's not confusing. It's not full of weird power foods or ancient ninja self-defense secrets. It's just a simple, to-the-point guide that shows you how to keep your family safe and their bellies full during the collapse and avoid the deadly holes that hijack so many survival plans. And just like Chuck showed me, we show you how to pick up all the supplies and equipment you need in a single trip to any superstore. That's why we're calling this guide Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart. Inside, you'll find everything you need to build a survival stockpile of food, water, and essential supplies. The secrets to keeping that stockpile full after a collapse, even when everyone else's stockpile is running dry. 
and Chuck's military strategies to protect your family from murderers, rapists, and angry, starving mobs. Let me take a minute to go through the guide with you, module by module, so you can see exactly what you'll be able to do with all the information inside. The first module is called the Ultimate Food Stockpiling Guide. Inside, you'll find a dirt simple guide on the safest ways to store food to make it last as long as possible. You're going to learn where to find a simple calculator to instantly know how much food you need to stockpile based on how many people you'll be feeding. 9. Life-sustaining foods that'll keep for 30 years. The stockpile temperature sweet spot that'll keep your stockpile fresh for years and years. Warning, if you're off by just a few degrees, your stockpile could be worthless when you need it most. How to keep your stockpile safe from the three stockpile killers, moisture, light, and pests. Plus, the ultimate food stockpiling guide also includes the instructional video, 50 Life-Saving Foods to Survive a Crisis. Now, in this video, we'll show you the simple, low-cost food that's packed with protein to give you the strength you need to survive the collapse. Plus, your kids love it. An energy-packed food that literally never goes bad. A food that'll keep you alive and healthy for years, practically by itself. It's so packed with carbs and protein, you almost don't need anything else. Plus, 48 more foods you need to save your family from starvation in a crisis. Of course, there's no telling how long a disaster might last. Maybe months, maybe even years. One day, your stockpile might run out. That's why the second module in this guide is called Never Run Out of Food. You need to be able to keep your family's bellies full, even once your stockpile runs out. This is where Chuck's experience living off the land really comes in handy. The first part of this module is a two-part video called The Down and Dirty Survival Garden. It's all about getting the most fruitful garden for the least amount of work. We'll show you a start-to-finish step-by-step guide to grow in your own survival garden. The six maximum calorie generator foods to plant that give you massive calorie output and keeps your family feeling full and satisfied. The done-for-you plant, tend, and harvest schedule, so you'll know when to plant which food depending on where you live. The perfect conditions to get rid of weeds and make sure they stay gone. Plus tons more of Chuck's survival garden strategies that he's used for years to keep food on his table without the grocery stores. Of course, you want more than vegetables and grains, so Never Run Out of Food also includes the video Fishing for Survival. You might already love to fish, but after the collapse, fishing won't be about relaxing. It'll be about staying alive. You need reliable techniques for catching lots of fish and catching them fast. So in this video, you'll learn a fishing lure so effective that it's outlawed in most competitions and even in some states. My personal favorite fishing method, the set it and forget it fish trap. Set this trap up in the morning and then come back in the evening and collect your fish. Chuck's checklist for the perfect fishing conditions so you'll know the exact time and place to cast your line. But if you don't live near water, fishing's not going to be an option. So Never Run Out of Food also includes the survivalist guide to hunting and trapping. Making your own snares and traps it isn't as hard as it sounds. You just have to know the right tricks. And I'm sure you already know plenty about hunting, but we're going to give a quick how-to just in case anyone doesn't. So in this guide, you'll learn dirt simple techniques for trapping rabbits and other small animals using supplies that you can find at Walmart. Chuck's get-in, get-out strategy for hunting any game as fast as possible. Plus, Chuck's silent hunter techniques for hunting without firearms, so you can get food without broadcasting to the world where you are with a loud gunshot. Now, with these first two modules, you'll keep your family fed no matter what happens, and no matter how long the collapse lasts, even if society never recovers. But eating is only part of staying alive. People lost in the wild don't usually die of starvation. They die of thirst. So the third module we're sending you is the done-for-you roadmap to finding, purifying, and storing water. Did you know that it only takes three days to die of thirst, even less if you're on the run from angry mobs or exposed to the heat of summer or the cold of winter? And dehydration is one of the worst ways to die. Your organs shrivel up as your body pulls the water into your blood, and then every cell of your body starts to dry up, and it hurts like you just got pummeled by Mike Tyson. 
last your brain shrinks until it's too small for your skull, and it pulls away and ruptures vital blood vessels. You die half crazy, suffering from the worst pain you've ever felt. And all that when you go less than three days without water. Don't let this happen to your family. Make sure you know how to properly store and find clean water. The first half of this module answers questions about safe water storage. Like, do you know how long you can store water before it becomes dangerous to drink? Do you know which storage containers can make water last twice as long and which can fill your water with poison? How about the trick to killing any bacteria or virus in your water? Hint, boiling it won't cut it. If you aren't 100% positive about the answers to these questions, your water stockpile could be more deadly than helpful. Then, in the second half of this module, Chuck shares his secrets for finding and purifying water. He'll reveal his most trusted three water purification techniques to kill bacteria and viruses, including the instructional video, Solar Water Purification. It shows you how to use the sun to make your water safe. The four safest natural sources of water that kept him alive when he was an army ranger. Five hidden water reserves in 94% of American homes. You have several weeks worth of water in your house right now. Make sure you know where to find it. Trust me, when everyone around you is so thirsty that their own bodies are torturing them, you'll be glad you downloaded the Done For You Roadmap to Finding, Purifying, and Storing Water. Now that food and water are taken care of, let's talk about what other supplies you'll need. Actually, there's so much to cover. We filled an entire module with a list of everything. It's called 135 Survival Essentials. Now, in this module, Chuck shares 135 items that he's discovered to be vital to surviving life or death situations. Things like ordinary newspaper and how it could save your life and how it already saves thousands of lives each year. One $3 item that can stop bleeding instantly. This checkout line purchase that would save the lives of 99% of lost hikers who die of exposure. A sewing kit to fix ripped clothes or, in an emergency, a bad cut. But get the right kind or it'll tear right back open. Plus 131 more supplies that are essential for survival. Most people don't realize they need these items until it's too late. And most survival guides, they don't bother mentioning them. So make sure you read through all 135 life-saving items and start stocking up on them on your next trip to Walmart. Well, now that your home is full of nutritious food, let's turn it into a fortress that protects your family from thieves, murderers, rapists, and mobs. The next module is Home to Fortress in 7 Days. This is where the zombies game is useful. You'll already know the most vulnerable spots in your house, so now it's just a matter of defending it. In this module, Chuck shares the 10 most common entry points breached by thieves and intruders, just in case your game of zombies didn't catch them all. Five tricks to discourage looters. You won't have to defend your house if you can trick mobs and thieves into passing it by. Seven wartime strategies to fortify your home. Chuck picked these up overseas fighting insurgents. If a mob wants to break into your house, they better bring a tank. Whatever's going on outside your family will be safe inside. But what if you do get caught outside? You need to know how to protect yourself. So module seven is dirty self-defense tricks. You're no MMA fighter and that's fine. You don't have to be Bruce Lee to defend yourself in a fight. All it takes is carrying the right tools. Now in this module, you'll learn 12 different self-defense essentials for keeping your family alive in virtually any confrontation. The one item you should always have on you to stop any fight before it starts. The best tool to defend yourself against multiple attackers. A police riot control weapon available at any Walmart and safe enough for your kids to use without putting themselves in danger. And so much more. A complete arsenal of commando tricks and tactics for staying alive in a war zone. Any muggers or thieves who think you're an easy target will learn quick that you and your family are not weak. And that's really what survival's all about, not being weak. When you choose to be mentally tough, that's when you can survive anything. In fact, the last module is how to instantly get a survive anything mindset. I'll admit it, this is one thing you can't pick up at Walmart. You can't get it in any store. But it's the one thing that every survivor shares, whether it's a man shipwrecked on a desert island, a Navy SEAL far behind enemy lines, 
a woman backed into a corner by a crack crazed thug, or a simple patriot caught in a riot. When you're truly determined to survive, nothing can stop you. You'll see ways to get out of danger that other people miss. You'll find solutions to problems when other people would just give up. In this last module, Chuck reveals the mental tricks used by Army Rangers to instantly get a survival mindset. A three-step solution to force your mind to believe that you can survive anything. Quick instructions to help your wife and children adopt that same survival mindset. You and your family will have the mental fortitude to make it through any disaster and stay happy and healthy during the collapse. Well, that makes seven modules, each packed with life-saving information. You've got a complete survival system from A to Z, no stone left unturned. Now, if you went looking for a comprehensive system like this anywhere else, they'd try to sell you each one of these modules as a separate guide. You'd end up spending anywhere from $100 to $200 each. That's up to $1,400. But me and Chuck aren't trying to get rich off this. We just want to make sure real patriots like you have what it takes to survive the coming hellstorm. Actually, we don't think $1,400 worth of information is enough. So along with all seven modules of Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart, we've also rounded up seven free bonus guides. The first one is Test Your Plan for Holes. In case you didn't write down the three tests that Chuck showed me, we're including them here for free. You'll get written step-by-step -step instructions on how to run your survival plan through each test. The Practice Disaster Week, the Start to Finish Equipment Check, and the Zombies Game. With this easy-to-read guide, you can make sure your survival plan will keep your family safe no matter what happens. And you can be sure you won't get stuck in the cold like I did. The next bonus is save thousands of dollars on your stockpile. You've heard about extreme couponers? These are the people who clip coupons and then head out to the store and fill their carts with free items. Well, you can use those same strategies to save up to 90% on the items you need in your survival stockpile. This guide breaks down the couponing strategies into dirt simple steps, so you'll find out secret sources to find coupons for the items you need. Easy strategies to save $50 from $25 worth of coupons. How to find free deals to grow your survival stockpile. If you're worried about shelling out the cash to fill your survivor stockpile, then this guide has you covered. The next bonus is the six foolproof strategies to keep your stockpile hidden. Did you know that Obama recently gave himself the right to confiscate your food, water, and other emergency supplies? It's true. With an executive order, Obama can now declare a state of emergency and then send in FEMA to take whatever they want from your home. Even though you were smart enough to prepare while all the welfare bums sat around collecting food stamps, Obama still wants to steal your stockpile and give it to people who haven't worked a day in their lives. So you need to know how to keep your stockpile hidden when FEMA agents come looking. In this free bonus guide, you'll learn three hiding places that'll keep your stockpile safe but still give you easy access. My personal favorite, right under their nose hiding spot. Thieves could practically be standing on top of your stockpile, and they'll never know it. Two search-proof hiding spots. A full FEMA team turning your house upside down won't find your stockpile. The next bonus guide is Erase Your Name Off the Grid. Right now, the government and giant corporations watch everything that you do. They know your address, your phone number, your income, what you search for on Google, what you last bought with a credit card. When social services crumble and lawlessness takes hold, people will use those lists to know who to come after. If you don't want government agents, hungry moms, and professional thieves targeting your family, you need to get your name off those lists. In this bonus guide, you'll learn three techniques to make sure your credit card and banking info never gets stolen. The one setting on your computer that you can switch on to keep giant corporations from knowing where you live and tracking your every move. Advice from a professional hacker on keeping your address out of government databases. Now, some people might call us crazy for being careful with our personal information, but I call it protecting my right to privacy. Obviously, the best way to prepare for a disaster is to spot it coming ahead of time. That's why the next bonus guide is spot a disaster before it hits. Chuck spent enough time as an army ranger helping people in all sorts of disaster situations that he's learned how to spot them coming a mile away. And the truth is, it's not that complicated. 
This quick and easy guide spells out the three signs of an impending disaster so you can evacuate before the roads get clogged up. How to plan an emergency route out of town so even if the roads are clogged, you can still get your family to safety. The five essential items you absolutely must have in your bug out bag to survive. This guide could be the difference between getting your family out of Dodge and getting caught in deadly riots. And finally, as if all this value wasn't enough, the last guide you'll get is the wealthiest man of the apocalypse. Now, I don't have to tell you that financial collapse in this country is imminent, and when the bottom falls out, the dollar won't be worth the paper it's printed on. Everything will be about trade and barter. Sure, precious metals like gold and silver will be used, but those are expensive and can make you a target for thieves. In this guide, Chuck and I give you a list of 11 items people will pay anything for when the impending mayhem strikes. Things like the little item you probably have in your junk drawer right now, but it's worthless unless you have the right kind. Two items to satisfy people's bad habits, so much that they'll be willing to pay whatever you ask. This simple necessity that keeps away infection. Stock up on those more valuable than gold items now, and when all hell breaks loose, you'll be able to barter for anything you need. If you bought each one of these guides separately, you'd pay over $350, but you're getting all six absolutely free. Combine that with the $1,400 you'd pay for the information in the seven core modules of Get Prepped and One Trip to Walmart, and you're looking at $1,750 worth of priceless knowledge that can spell the difference between life and death. But me and Chuck know there's a recession going on, and we don't want you to have to pay as much as those other guys charge. So we decided that a more fair price would be closer to $250. Think about it. Just $250 for the peace of mind of knowing that your family can depend on you to keep them safe during a crisis. Now, I know that times have been tough the last few years, and $250 is still a lot of money. I'd hate to think that a real patriot wasn't able to protect his family because I priced this guy too high. So I'm offering a great opportunity to you that's only good as long as this page is open. I'll drop the price of the guide to $47, but you have to download it right now. I'm not leaving this deal hanging around for just anyone. That's a savings of $203 or $1,703 compared to what those other guys are charging you. So if you want to start to finish guide on keeping your family alive during a disaster, click the orange Add to Cart button right now. Now, if you've stuck with me this long, I know you're a man who makes careful decisions. So let me share with you the thoughts of a few patriots who are already using this guide. Jake Zimmerman from Texas said, Get prepped in one trip to Walmart is the real deal. I checked out some other survival programs, but they were all too complicated. Craig and Chuck lay it out real easy, what it takes to get ready for disaster. I'm glad I have this simple guide. Now I know I can keep my family safe. Ted Jackson from Virginia said, I was trying to get my family ready for disaster, but there are so many things to think about. Your food, water, supplies. And then what if people get violent? I wouldn't know what to do. There are different guides out there for these things, but most cost over $100 each. I didn't have $1,000 to fork over to make sure I had all my bases covered. Luckily, I found Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart. This guide has everything. Craig spells out crystal clear how to provide food and water for my family and how to keep them safe from mobs. Thanks, Craig. You saved my family's lives. Dwayne Borden from Nebraska said, If you're paying attention, you know that disaster's coming. But between work and taking care of my family, I didn't think I had time to get completely prepped. But I took what Craig and Chuck taught, and I got prepped in one trip to Walmart. It took a few hours on a Saturday, and now I have what I need in case anything ever happens. I don't know why it took so long for someone to put together a program like this. It's helped people across the country, and it can help you. Plus, each copy of Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart is delivered by ClickBank. It's one of the safest and most trusted online stores in the world. Your information is protected by the same security software used by banks and credit card companies. You also get ClickBank's 60-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. If for any reason you're not happy, just request a refund and you'll get 100% of your money back. No questions asked. So if you still need time to decide, go ahead and download the guide. Then if you decide you don't need it, you've got 60 days to make up your mind. 
Just make sure to download the guide while this page is still open so you can get this limited time price of $47. Now remember, you're getting all seven modules and all six bonuses. That includes the ultimate food stockpiling guide, including the video 50 Life-Saving Foods to Survive a Crisis. Never run out of food, including the down and dirty survival garden, fishing for survival, and the survivalist guide to hunting and trapping. The done for you roadmap to finding, purifying, and storing water. 135 survival essentials. Home to fortress in seven days. Dirty self defense tricks. And how to instantly get a survive anything mindset. Plus the bonus guides. Test your plan for holes. Save thousands of dollars on your stockpile. Six foolproof strategies to keep your stockpile hidden. Erase your name off the grid. Spot a disaster before it hits. And the wealthiest man of the apocalypse. Now, if you bought all these guides somewhere else, you'd spend over $1,750. But if you download today, it's only $47. Well, the way I see it, you have three choices. One, you can stick with whatever survival plan you have right now and hope whatever holes it has aren't big enough to kill you. But I'll warn you, I thought my survival plan was complete and my family almost froze to death. Or there's option number two. Download another survival program. You may get the info you need to survive, but it'll be expensive and complicated. You'll spend so much time trying to understand confusing instructions that you'll never actually get prepared. When disaster comes, bad preparation is worse than no preparation at all. Then, there's option three. You download Get Prepped in one trip to Walmart and get as much info as you'd get from 15 other guides. You follow the no-nonsense survival plan from a survival expert and get your family ready to survive anything. When it hits the fan, you'll be able to keep your family safe. I gotta say, I really hope you choose option three. I hate to think of any patriot not being able to give his kids something to eat when they're hungry, or not being able to stop his wife from shivering on a cold winter night, or even worse, not being able to protect his family when a gang of starving, angry thugs attack your home. With Get Prepped in one trip to Walmart, you'll never have to face those terrible situations. You'll have the simple tricks you need to keep your family alive through any disaster. Click the button to download it right now. If you're still here, you probably have a few questions. Let me take a second to answer the most common questions I hear about Get Prepped in one trip to Walmart. Is my order safe? Your order is all done through ClickBank. They use the same anti-hacker software that banks and credit card companies use. It's one of the safest sites on the internet. How do I read it? You'll get the guide as a PDF, which means you can read it on your computer, a smartphone, tablet, or e-reader, or you can print it out and read it anywhere you like. I like using a PDF rather than a regular book because it lets me keep the price low. Is the collapse really going to happen? Look, we all saw the riots in Ferguson, Missouri, and how people are only a breath away from social chaos. All it takes is a little spark to set them off. Imagine what will happen when instead of a spark, you have a huge explosion. If you pay attention, you've got experts warning about terrorist attacks, natural disasters, long-lasting nationwide blackouts, and total economic meltdown. Any one of those could trigger widespread social collapse. This guide will help your family survive the disaster and the violent aftershock. Will this guide really keep my family safe? Yes, if you follow it. It worked for me. It's worked for patriots all over the country, and it'll work for you. It takes everything you need to know about surviving a disaster and breaks it into easy-to-follow steps. Can I really pick up everything I need at Walmart? Like I said already, I can't guarantee that your local Walmart has every product in stock, but if your local Walmart doesn't have it, Walmart's website will, and they offer free shipping, so actually you could even order everything online and skip the trip altogether. Is my home big enough to keep a stockpile? Well, just because you live in a tiny apartment, it doesn't mean you can't get prepped. Some people store their stockpile in a closet or under their bed. Wherever you live, you can make space for a survival stockpile. All right, what if I'm not happy with the guide? If you're not happy, you can get 100% of your money back, no questions asked. But I'm confident that you'll be happy with Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart. It'll be the difference between helplessly watching your family suffer during a disaster and being their protector, no matter what happens. Click the button below to Get Prepped in One Trip to Walmart.